Hey guys, all right, it's Goldie and I'm back. We're gonna work on some heavy textured white stucco today. But first I'm gonna bring you back to the back side of the wall that we did on the last video. Here I'm just using that same pen tool. I'm gonna to make some little score marks that are just really organic, no rhyme or reason here. If you've watched my last video, we worked on the front side, which is the exterior side, and this is gonna be one of our interior walls for a room box. I'm gonna take this um, white paint that I used on the other side of the wall, and I'm just going to lightly coat the whole surface with it, and this is just a base coat, so we're gonna get inside of those cracks as much as possible and give it one nice good coat. Those cracks are going to help just give it a little bit more definition when we put our texture down, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to add some of the uh, super grout. It's a premixed grout that I used on my last video. I'm going to link it below. I'm going to add some of that paint in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab it all over the surface. Here I'm using just a paint palette knife to get it onto the surface. I'm gonna smear it all around. And then I'm gonna take one of these really thin magic sponge sheets and I'm gonna just kind of dab it just to give it that nice clean texture and to rub it into the grout lines as much as I can. Now with this stuff, I like to work in sections because since the paint is added to the grout, it does dry a little bit quicker than just the grout itself. So I do like to work in sections, but you can coat the whole thing if you don't intend on adding the grout lines as well. So since I'm working in sections, you're gonna go ahead and keep mixing as much as you need. You can of course mix a whole batch this is the simple grout that I use. It's a ready-made grout mix. It's easily found on Amazon or in Home Depot. I will link that below. I'm gonna mix another batch and just keep on working around the perimeter. Now this stuff is pretty um, messy. So if you like mess, go ahead and embrace it. If you don't, go ahead and put some protective plastic down just in case you have carpet like me and you can easily scrape it off if you need to. Um, if you do get some down on your carpet, go ahead and let it dry. Don't try to pick it up as it's wet as it will get into the carpet. Um, if you let it dry, you can pick it up as a little dry piece. That's a little tip. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to go ahead and smear all around the perimeter and I'm making sure that it's pretty even. The next part, I'm going to show you how to make sure it's even by using some wet hands. So just by the unnatural ability of how amazing our hands are, we're able to feel with our fingertips how thick and how thin certain materials are. And we're able to gauge where we need to put more material down. So just roll your sleeves up, get your hands sturdy. Don't worry about your nails, girl. You can do them later. I'm, I'm going to use my hands for the rest of this because honestly, it just feels so good. <laughs> honestly it's like unleashing my inner child it's like putting clay and finger painting at the same time and you can get a better gauge of how thick and how thin the material is being put on to the surface so just have fun with this mini making is all about uh, unleashing your inner child anyways and then once you've got a good gauge on how thick everything is you're going to want to take some wet hands and I like to just kind of pat down where the ridges of the texture are from the palette knife. And I'm going to just lift up. It's almost like giving little feather touches onto the surface. You can see right now how it's kind of pulling the texture up. And that's what we want. We want it to look like stucco. And if you just leave it as it is, it's going to give you those like horizontal ridges. And that's what we don't want. I'm gonna take my palette knife and add any little areas that I missed. And then I'm gonna rub my finger along just to make sure that it's all even. And then continue with your little feather touches along the whole surface until you get a texture that you like. Now this is completely up to you. The more um, padding that you do, it's gonna, especially with wet hands, it's gonna pull up the texture. See how heavily textured it is right now? I prefer that, but if you want a lighter texture, you can go ahead and let it dry. Proceed with kind of smearing it down just a bit for a lighter texture. After it's dried for about five minutes, I'm gonna come and wet my hands again, and I'm gonna kind of just pat along the surface and make sure that all of those really harsh ridges are patted down just a bit. 
let that dry and then i'm going to come around to the other side where we worked on the first video i'm going to install my plexiglass window and i'm going to install just a framing it's going to be really simple i use these bamboo skewers i got from amazon i'll link them below and i'm going to just very carefully measure along the side of the window now as a precisionist i would particularly like to make the marks and the measurements inside of the interior window but because sometimes the foam expands i'm going to make the mark make it twice because you need two and then i'm going to take some tape and i'm going to mask it so that the saw doesn't eat up the side of the bamboo skewer i use my micro mark little miniature saw go ahead and make that cut it's very easy to make cuts on this little saw i highly recommend it if you are a miniature maker i'm going to go ahead and fit those in make sure that they fit perfectly if you need to trim them down it's always better to make a larger cut or a longer cut than it is to make a shorter cut because you do want them to fit very tight i'm going to take two more out for the bottom and the top make my marks now that i have my sides in it makes it much easier to gauge where those cuts are going to be and then go ahead and make your mark and then make your cuts now if you don't have a mini saw don't worry about it if you don't have a mini chop saw don't trip chocolate chip you can cut it with a little tiny hand saw and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna just gently place in the plexiglass wall about halfway through this is a two inch um, foam board so these little strips of wood actually work perfectly because i can get two strips on each side which is going to frame it just right so i'm going to push that framing down until it's flush to the surface and then i'm going to flip it around so that i can frame my other side now, even if you didn't do some precision measurements on your plexiglass and it's seeming to fall through, don't worry about it. You can, this framing is going to keep it in lock anyways, especially if you frame it from both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint my little framing pieces and just let them dry. So there's two types of tape that I usually use. There's a 1 8 inch double-sided tape and a T-Rex super glue tape. For this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my 1 8 inch um, double-sided tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and line my window trimmings with that. The super glue tape is pretty strong and you will have to cut that down, but for this 1 8 inch strips, I will use that just for ease and just in case I do want to remove this window or change it out later. So I'm going to install my top and bottom the same exact way. I'm going to turn it over, remove my protective layer that is protecting my acrylic. And it should look something like this. And I wasn't really happy with just the square frame. So I'm going to go ahead and take some more the scrap bamboo and I'm gonna just go ahead and frame it just a little bit more realistic the way a window should look. Paint those scraps and then I'm gonna go ahead and measure exactly the middle part of where the window should be. Make sure that it's perfectly measured in the middle. And then I'm gonna put some post-it notes down so that the glue doesn't touch the acrylic at all while it's drying because if it does, it will add some clouding and we don't want that. So just to frame it nice and clean, I'm gonna take one more skewer and I'm gonna add it to the top and the bottom like so. And while those paint pieces are drying, I'm gonna remove the uh, post-it notes that I put below. And it, <laughs> trust me on this, you wanna make sure where the sticky part goes because it, this is a struggle to try to get the post-it note out from underneath. So just be careful where you put the actual sticky part. I'm gonna take my little tool. I'm gonna to just kind of try to very carefully without scratching the acrylic, try to get that piece out. After that struggle, I'm gonna add my nice little finish piece on the outside, which is gonna frame it quite nicely. It's gonna give it that nice finish professional look. Oops, yeah, so go ahead, glue it down. With this, you can use super glue, which I did here, and I'm just gonna very carefully, without touching the stone, place my framing down and encapsulate the window itself. 
that case, if you ever want to replace the actual framing of the window, you can do so. And if you don't care about that, go ahead and glue it to the surface of the stone. I'm going to take my almighty pink masking tape, which is light duty, and just very carefully um, glue and then tape down the window frame. Make sure it's perfectly level. So here's our finished wall. You're going to go ahead and see part three on the next one. We're going to go ahead and finish this build out. If you've liked this, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.